Nowadays, everywhere you look, you're likely to find someone extolling the many health benefits of the green superfood, kale. Nutritionists call it one of the healthiest and most nutrient-dense plants on earth. And yes, it is rich in vitamins and minerals like manganese, potassium, calcium, and magnesium. Kale is also chock full of health-giving anti-aging antioxidants, including vitamin C, quercetin, camphorol, and beta-carotene. Furthermore, kale contains substances known as bile acid sequestrants, which can bind to bile acids in our gut and prevent them from being reabsorbed, therefore reducing the total amount of cholesterol in our system and potentially lowering our heart disease risk. Most exciting of all, though, kale and its other cruciferous relatives, including broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, turnips, kohlrabi, bok choy, and radishes also contain natural compounds with protective effects against cancer. One of these is sulforaphane, which has been shown to help fight the very beginning of cancer in laboratory experiments, including in animals. Another is indole-3-carbonyl, also known as I3C, which has been experimentally shown to help prevent cancer. IC3 is made in our gut when cruciferous vegetables, including kale and broccoli, are digested. And a recent lab study published in the scientific journal Immunity shows that I3C reduces gut inflammation, helping to lower our risk of developing colon cancer. In another recent study, genetically modified mice were fed a diet rich in I3C, which has been shown to activate a protein known as aryl hydrocarbon receptor, or AHR. AHR acts to lower inflammation and lowers the risk of developing colon cancer. The mice used in this study had been genetically engineered so they were unable to make or activate AHR by themselves in their guts. Naturally, they readily developed gut inflammation, which progressed to colon cancer. However, when the study researchers fed the very same mice a diet which was rich in I3C, which triggers AHR formation and activation in their guts, they did not develop either inflammation or cancer. Not only that, when the mice that were already developing the tumors were switched to the I3C enriched diet, they ended up with less tumors, which were also more benign and less dangerous. In other words, our diet has a profound effect on the level of inflammation in our gut and on our chances of getting colon cancer. While environmental and genetic factors may also play a role in the likelihood of our developing cancer, what this study actually shows is that eating locally sourced, non-irradiated, non-GMO plant-based foods like kale, broccoli, and other cruciferous vegetables can be a very effective form of prevention. But, unfortunately, we can't change the genetic factors we've inherited from our parents that may predispose us to various diseases, including cancer, but the science of epigenetics says that those genes don't necessarily have to be turned on and can actually be turned off by what we eat. We can reduce our risk of cancer by regularly consuming a diet that's rich in vegetables and fruits, which has been previously shown to lower the likelihood of multiple cancers, especially those affecting our digestive tract. Hope you've learned a lot from this, and we'll see you next time for the next TTAC Health Nugget. God bless.